A new book describes the southern African nation of Angola as an economic miracle for its rapid transformation after a brutal civil war. But critics of Angola's longtime government say the high rises and new developments that glitter in Angola's capital have come at a high cost. VOA's Anita Powell has our report. Angola has transformed itself in the last decade from an impoverished, war-torn nation into an economic powerhouse. A new book details this incredible process. Angola had a civil war that lasted for 41 years and that killed a million people. Um, by the end of it, obviously, Angola was in, in tatters. What happened over the, in the, the subsequent decade was absolutely extraordinary. The economy of Angola uh, multiplied tenfold. It was the greatest growth story in the world uh, in the early 21st century. But Angolan activists say that development hasn't benefited everyone. Angola is one of the world's most unequal societies. It was necessary, but the problem is the way it was done. It came at the cost of a lot of people have been completely marginalized and excluded from this process. And activists say human rights and free expression have been stifled along the way. Journalist and activist Rafael Marquez de Moraes says his critical coverage of the government is what really landed him in court for defamation. He is critical of the development brought about by Angola's longtime president, in power since 1979. What development? That's the question we have to ask. Uh, when you build high-rises in Africa, especially in countries like Angola, where there's so many, people tend to believe that the high-rises uh, translate into development, but that's not true. It has the highest child mortality rate in the world, worse than Afghanistan. What development is that, that we cannot provide the basics uh, to save children? Angola is now Sub-Saharan Africa's third largest economy that's largely been driven by oil. But that, say activists, is not enough. And they worry about what the future holds for Angola. Anita Powell, VOA News, Johannesburg.